today would be different. Father, that our worship, Lord God, that you would inhabit the praises of your saints this day. Just like David had said, guys, my praises to the Lord will always be on the, on the lips, on my lips. Amen. Sometimes we worship, sometimes we pray our problems, praise our problems, and we want to really go, go ahead and glorify God for what he's done. God has been too good for us. God has been too good to us that we shouldn't praise him this day. So it doesn't matter how big, how small our church is. You know, we serve a good God. We serve a great God. God is on the throne. Amen. So today, let it be different. This day is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. It's no accident that you are here. God orchestrated this moment, this time that we can worship him. The words aren't going to be on. Uh, the words might not be on here, but we want to go ahead and worship God and just clap along, sing along. Just bless God with this worship during this time. So thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming out who are here in the building and for those watching online. As we get started with worship, I encourage you guys just to sing along, clap along. If you guys don't know the words, just feel the Holy Spirit this morning. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty? so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who rules with nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of his brilliance the king of glory the king above all Oh, worthy is the king who comes. 
conquered the grave. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Say, you're worthy, you're worthy. He is the king who conquered the grave. Who worthy is the lamb who was slain? Worthy is the king. Sing it one more time. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would. You would bend. You lay down your life that I may be set free. Ooh. Jesus, I sing for all that you done for. Come on, sing. This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is a family love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down. Then I'll be peace and free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for. All that you've done for me, I sing, I sing. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. We sing to you, Jesus. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. You're worthy of everything, Jesus. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever bring we live for you Jesus Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. 
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, Jesus, the name of all. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes, little wonder. Show me who you are and feel. Your heart and lead me in your love to those around. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and your love to those around and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. Only there.
closer Take me a little deeper I want to know your heart I want to know your heart Cause your love is so much sweeter Than anything I tasted I want to know your heart I want to know your heart Has ravished my heart It's taken me over Taken me over And all I want is to be is with you forever, with you forever. So pull me a little closer, take me a little deeper. I want to know your heart, I want to know your heart. Cause your love is so much sweeter. Any can I taste it? Want to know your heart? I want to know, I want to know. So pull me a little closer, take me a little deeper. Want to know your heart? I want to know your heart. Cause your love is so much sweeter than any. Want to know your heart Want to know your So pull me Pull me a little closer Take me a little deeper I want to know your heart Want to know your heart Cause your love is so much sweeter Than anything I tasted I wanna know your heart. I wanna, I wanna know. I wanna know your heart. I wanna know your heart. I wanna know. All right, let's just uh, close in prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you, God, for. This opportunity, God, to worship you this morning, God. And Lord, the things that we take for granted, God, for those who are not able to worship you, God, we are able this morning, God. And we're so grateful and thankful that we're even able to be in this place, God, to lift you up, God, to, to allow your Holy Spirit to challenge us this day, God. We pray for your presence this morning, Lord God. And I pray for strength over those that are weak right now, God, healing, God, over those who are sick right now, Lord, and those who need a miracle, God, those that are, are lost right now, God, I pray, God, may your Holy Spirit bring them to their knees, God. May your Holy Spirit bring them, God, to a place of repentance, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.
exciting because uh, yesterday we had the opportunity to walk with our son just to talk to him. You know, he's going to be 18 years old and it's kind of a big deal. And I, I think that we don't make a big deal out of it because sometimes we take these ages for granted. So we wanted to do something special and, you know, it's kind of like we want to send them off to the world and, uh, you know, me and my wife, we really don't want to be embarrassed of how we raised our kids. And these are certain things that he needs in his life to say we raised them good. And at the same time, we're not looking for compliments. We're just saying every kid should be like this. Every kid gr growing up and being a man should have a belt. This is what we gave him. Uh, uh, we gave him a Bible. Uh, Chris gave him a Bible because every man going forward in his journey with life, you're going to run into problems. You're going to run into all these different characters, but you also need the word of God for guidance. You don't, you don't need a proverb from no Chinese cookie. You got the Proverbs in the book of, in the Bible, right? Right. I'm telling I'm being serious. Uh, you know, I also gave him a watch, you know, uh, just to signify uh, that time flies. Man, I'm 53 years old and I still remember when I was 17 years old and all the decisions I wish I would have made different. You know what I mean? Not be so dumb, not be so arrogant. And I believe the dumbest decisions I've ever made in my life was when I was from 18 to 23. Right. Because immediately I was in the position where I can make my own decisions. And I thought I knew it all. You know, I thought I can, I'm invincible. I thought I was strong and I'm really not. Then my, uh, my son spoke with him about going to work. You have, every man has to go to work. You know, and the Bible talks about in Genesis chapter two, verse 19, it talks about how God created a, a garden and God put man inside the garden and he put him there to get to work it to have a job man i tell you when covid happened a lot of people men a lot of men were freaking out because they wanted that job they wanted to go to work and there was nothing that they could do but just stay home and that was tough i'm sure that's tough so every man needs to go to work and actually the woman didn't come till later so man if you want a woman get a job <laughs> right get go to work and then, uh, uh, what else did we give him? Mr. Ted, a wallet. And that, which, yeah, there you go. Which leads me to my next point. We're going to get ready to take up uh, tithes and offerings. And I remember I, I, I posted this. Uh, I posted this on my uh, Facebook one day. What's in your wallet? What's that slogan from? Capital One. What's in your wallet? And you got to be careful what is in your wallet. See, when... Ted walked with my son, gave him some advice. He also handed him a wallet and he put like a thousand dollar bills in there. No, Monopoly money. No, I was messing around. He didn't. But the, the, every man should carry a wallet and have some money inside. There's no reason for us to be broke walking around because the Bible tells us that we are God's children. He provides for us. And sometimes we're broke. Sometimes we're busted and disgusted because we don't know how to steward what God has given us. You know, we don't act our, instead of saying act our age, uh, Dave Ramsey, I, I believe, says act your wage. You know, if you don't make that much money, don't live like you do. So in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8, this one question is asked by the Lord. And it says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say... In what way have we robbed you? It's kind of like God's having a conversation. I don't know if you guys ever had this conversation. Like I had a conversation with my wife and she's arguing with me. And she'll ask me a question. You know what's wrong with you? And before I answer, she goes, I'll tell you what's wrong with you. It's like, then you don't need me here for this argument, right? So I'll just walk away. It's kind of like that with God here. God is saying, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you ask, in what way have we robbed you? And God says, in tithes and in offerings. Now, I'm not going to say here in my church, I'm not going to beat nobody up. We're, we're good. We're faithful givers. We're above the American average in when we give. And I'm thankful for that. But God poses a question. Would you rob me? What's in your wallet? When we walk around in life, are we holding on to something that really rightfully belongs to the Lord? See, God is saying, this is a tithe that doesn't really, you're not giving it to me. You're actually returning it to me. 
That's what God is saying. I'm here to let you know, guys, that's between you and God. If you don't want to give, I still will we'll love you the same. Nothing's going to change. You know, because we've all heard that. We've heard that statement before. You, oh, you go to church, all they want is your money. I agree with you, right? I heard that statement. But every time I go to Starbucks, all they want is your money, right? Every time I go to Burger King, all they want is my money, right? Seriously, every, I'm, I'm getting ready to check out. I'm getting ready to buy and all this stuff. I see all this impulse buying. All they want is my money. All they want is my money. And we never say things like that, right? And we take up an offering and tithes here at this church one day of the week. That's it. We don't do it on Wednesday. We don't do no special offering. Even if we have a guest speaker coming in, which we do in two weeks, we don't. We just do one offering a week. See, because at the end of the day, if I don't want nobody to go away grumpy. I don't want this to close your heart. This should be the easiest part of the service. If you don't want to give, don't give. Don't And don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty if you don't give. But I will say this, because the, the, the Holy Spirit's not going to make you feel guilty. The devil will. But I believe God is the example. How he gave his only begotten son. And God is actually saying, hey, you have robbed me. Let's, let's call it for what it is. You, you've robbed me. If you don't pay your tithes, you don't pay your offerings, you rob me. That's what God is saying. Me, the pastor, I'm not even in the middle of this. It's a conversation between you and God. So this is God speaking to the people. But every time God kind of brings a challenge, every time God puts people in, in a predicament, he always makes a way of escape. And he says... He says, he challenges them. In verse 9, he tells them, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. In other words, I'm not cursing you. You position yourself under a curse. This is why you're always broke. This is why you're never satisfied. This is why every time you, you save some money, there's always a predicament coming forth, right? And then all of a sudden, you have to pay for this, pay for that, pay for this. He goes, you're cursed with a curse. Not that I cursed you. He goes, but he made a way out. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. You know how much is a tithe? It's 10% of your income. You know how much a tithe is in, uh, in Mexico? It's 10% of your income. What about China? 10% of your income, right? You're returning back to God what rightfully belongs to you. He goes, that there may be food in my house. And try me. He says, he's challenging, he's putting it out there. Try me. Try being faithful to this, guys. Try me in this. He goes, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out, a, uh, pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. Amen. The Lord has done so much for me in my house, I can't even remember it. Everything that the Lord has done. In verse 11, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. In everything, in everything. So in other words, when that curse is trying to come your way, when that problem is coming your way, he goes, test me. And he goes, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. See, because the, the devil hates you so much, guys, that he's even attacking your finances. He's even throwing unwanted, unnecessary bills your way. Unnecessary desires. You know what I mean? When you need to have the latest and greatest iPhone. You know why they have so many iPhones? It's because they didn't get it right the first time. Right? They sold you an iPhone that would, had some bugs in it. And then he goes, it's time for an upgrade. It's time for an upgrade. But it's okay. God's going to upgrade you. He's going to put a deposit. He's going to download an upgrade in your spirit right now. And then you're going to have a new way of thinking. You're going to be free from this. Don't let money wear you down. Don't let money dictate if you're going to be happy or not. Amen. Seriously, 
when I know there's when I look at my bank account and there's a lot of money, I, I'll be honest. It's like, whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost. But I shouldn't feel that way. I should have the Holy Ghost regardless of what my bank statement says. Amen. So if you did not receive an offering envelope, just raise your hand. We'll get one out to you if you want to be part of this. And you that are online, if you want to give, continue to give. We are on Venmo, so you can just look for us at the Cure Church Nashville and just give out you uh, whatever gifts that you want to give to us. And we thank you. We appreciate it. And uh, like my wife said, what's going on here, we're, we renovated this about, I want to say about two months ago, about two months ago, right? And uh, I'm thankful that we did this right away because I'm looking at another church, a Hispanic church down the street or right here in the same parking lot, they're doing the exact same thing that we did. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I, we got ours out of the way. So now we just have this uh, carpet to look at, and hopefully that will get taken care of. But, you know, we got these shirts. You know, God's given us an opportunity to be good stewards over what he's given us, so we got these good shirts. And check it out. Jesus is the cure, amen. You know, we, we got this nice and bold because sometimes we're a little too shy to tell talk about Jesus. And if you want to uh, uh, would like to purchase the shirt, amen, they look just like this. You'll look just like this. Haircut is not included, amen. But you want to go ahead and pick one up, by all means. They are $20, and like I, my wife said, they're going to go to help the renovation of the church. And it just God gave us an opportunity, an idea to do this. Not to get extra and ask for extra. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, God, we thank you, God, that we can give back a portion and return back a portion of what you what rightfully belongs to you. God, and I pray, God, that as we give, Father, that you would download a spirit of stewardship into our, into our system, God, and our thoughts. We thank you, God, because you're going to rebuke the devourer. We thank you, God, because you are making a way where there is no way. We thank you, Lord, because we are not bound by money, Father, but we are just here to glorify you, to be taught your word. And I pray, Jesus, that as we give, we give liberally and cheerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, guys. Are you all ready? All right. Today, I am not going to preach. I'm going to uh, leave that over to my son. So our church, what makes us a very unique and different is our church is a discipleship church where you just don't come in and look and it's like what well, you know I'm just going to church and do the religious things I believe that God wants you to do something and become the church and be a preacher not if not here in the pulpit but be a preacher out in the streets and let them know discipleship invite and that's how it all starts it's just an invitation so let's just give it up as my son comes in and he's going to share today's uh, scripture reading for us. Amen. All right, everybody. We are so glad that you guys can join us on this Sunday morning. And as you guys know, like it's been about two months, you said, two months since we've had our renovation since uh, after, after our conference, right, in Kansas. I think it's been like this. And, you know, I think it's actually really nice. I think it's really, really nice for, for how the church is looking and everything. I know that about the carpet, it's all kind of bad. But, you know, <laughs> it's something that we can deal with for right now. But, so before I get into today's message, I do want to let you guys know, for those who are taking notes, this message is actually called the renovation. I actually started this message during the time that we were going through renovations in this church. So before I get into today's message, let's just open up in prayer. So, Father God, Lord... I just pray right now, Lord, that your anointing may come upon me, Father God. Whenever I'm speaking your word, that your servants will hear your voice, Father God. And I remove myself from this message, Lord, and I allow you and I ask you to take over, Father God. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So, all right, you guys, how many of you guys know what the word renovation actually means? Raise your, you raise your hand if you guys know what renovation actually means. Raise your hand. Awesome. So, renovation means to restore something, renew, refresh, or rejuvenate. Basically, you're out with the old and in with the new. So I know that sometimes it's really easy for us to get renovation and remodeling mixed up with each other. 
What remodeling means is to change the structure or the form. And that's something that we didn't do in this church. We didn't change the structure or the form. We just, we got, as you can see, there was a wall, there was a pillar right here. All we did was just take it down. We didn't restructure the form or anything. We didn't add on to something else on this building. What we did was we restored this building to looking brand new, even though it's not. We received it one way, but when we did that renovation, we restored it. Our church was under repairing to make it easier. So we're going to go over three steps uh, about renovation in our lives. That's what I want to talk about, renovation in our lives. So if you guys are taking notes, the first note I do want you guys to write down is rethink that space. Rethinking that space. So have you ever thought to yourself, Lord, is there any part of me that I should surrender to you and uh, about my life in my life because let's be honest some of us need some renovation in our spirit some of us have a dusty spirit if we want to call it that if you turn to job chapter 13 verse 23 we're going to read over this real quick if you guys are there say amen say amen once you guys are there i'll give you guys a little bit because i want you guys to highlight this do something write it down but we're going to read over this so in Job chapter 13, verse 23, it says, tell me what have I done wrong? Show me my rebellion and my sin. All right, so like I said, some of us have a dusty spirit. We have to examine ourselves. And, and, and we haven't examined ourselves though in a while. And it's really important because some of us have junk in our lives that we need to, uh, that we, need, we don't need. We don't need that junk in our life. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see because we're, we fill our lives with so many different things. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember, but our pastor's office was actually like right here. It was actually right here. And I can tell you that, that that was not even an office. It was more of a storage room. There was so much junk in this room, so much junk in this room. And it, it's just, it wasn't even funny. But after we rethought of that space, all that junk is gone. I know that we have some of the stuff in the back, but it's more organized, more situated and everything. It's not as cluttered as it used to be. And this kind of reminded me about the story about Jonah, in all honesty, rethinking your space. Why does this remind me about Jonah? It, uh, I know that we know the story about Jonah on how Jonah was uh, sent by God to go to Nineveh to preach his word because judgment was coming their way. But here's Jonah, he, he took another way. He took another way away from God's purpose and you know God had to send a storm and during that storm Jonah had to rethink of his decision he had to rethink about that space that was in his life that why didn't he want to go and that reason was because of prejudice he didn't want to see them saved he felt like the Ninevites were evil he felt like they deserved to be judged so he had to rethink of that space in his heart of prejudice let me ask you what, 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 is, uh, what is God dealing with you? What do you have to rethink in your life? What's, what's, uh, what's God trying to send you to, to go do, but you don't want to do it because maybe somebody's a certain way. Maybe you have a hidden spirit uh, inside of you filled with prejudice. That's why I say it's very important to ask God to examine yourself. Maybe it's time to rethink that space, or maybe it's time to rethink that space where you look at other people in lust. You know, God doesn't like that. I'll be honest, I've dealt with that for a long time in the past, but you know, I had to rethink of that space and ask God for his help. I had to cry out to God. There's no shame in asking God for help. He's already won the battle. God can deliver you from anything, but you have to be hungry. You have to go to him and humble yourself to him and ask him, Lord, is this space right here, is this not of you? I need to rethink of this space. I need you to take this out. God gave us so much freedom. He gave us the best gift of all time. And I know that he gave us his son. That's the best gift of all time, of course, but he also gave us free will. God doesn't force you to do anything that you don't wanna do. We either answer the call of God or we ignore, the, or ignore him. God gave us the ability to re reevaluate our lives. That's just so awesome. That's so awesome that he gave us that ability. So I looked it up. How many thoughts does the average person have per minute? Do you guys know what the average thought is? Real quick, raise your hand if you guys know what the average thought. 
All right, so the average thought per minute is 50 thoughts. And you know how many minutes there are per day? There's 1,440 minutes per day. So can you guys imagine how many thoughts are actually in a day? I did the math and it came out to be 70 to 72,000 thoughts per day, the average person. And I say that because I know that some of us don't like to use our brain all the time. I know that some of us don't like to think as much, but you know, after looking at that number, 70 to 72,000 thoughts per day, I finally realized why I feel like I'm crazy sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, so we just, we just went over the math. If you don't believe me, look it up. Look up the math. But anyways, so we have about 70 to 72,000 thoughts a day. But let me ask you something. How many of those thoughts are actually about Jesus? How many of those thoughts are actually about Jesus? I know we, we won't think of Jesus every, every thought or anything like that. But how many do you actually have? Me, I'll be honest. I probably, probably have about 100. I'll be honest with you. And looking at that number, it's going up. I mean, it keeps on going up and up. And everything. I'm not saying that to give myself praise, but I'm saying this because a hundred thoughts of those are about Jesus, but the rest are about my fleshly desires. And I want those numbers to actually be flipped. The less desires I have of myself, the less crazier I'll be, to be honest. Anyway, so step one to renovation in our lives is to rethink that space. We saw how Jonah had to uh, rethink or reevaluate re his space. And we also saw how many thoughts we actually have per day. So step two, write it down if you guys are taking notes. Step two is get rid of that junk. So our next step, like I said, is to get rid of that junk. So how many of us think that uh, getting rid of that junk is just throwing stuff under your bed or in the closet? I know I did that quite a bit of times when I was a little kid. You know, to me, it was a clean, it was a clean room to me, but to my parents, it was not. It was not a clean room because my mom obviously knows what clean is. So, <laughs> but you know, for some of us, it's impossible because sometimes we live in those situations so long that we get used to it. Like I said, uh, this past Wednesday, sometimes we can get so immune to a smell that we don't even recognize that smells even there anymore. And once uh, something, somebody else walks into your space, they can easily identify that smell. That's why it's important to get rid of that junk. And that's how God is. Uh, we can hide some, some junk from, from God and think that we have cleaned that junk, but in all honesty, God sees it. And, uh, and he asks us to get rid of that junk and to clean our spirits. In Psalms 51.10, write it down real quick. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, uh, right spirit within me. That's David saying this prayer to God after he had, he had uh, just uh, sinned towards God. So I know what you're thinking, isn't that a song though? Isn't that a song? It sure is. But you know, see, but you see, it's very, very important for to ask God to clean our hearts because we sure do have some dirty ones. We, we sure do have some dirty hearts at times. It's like, has anyone ever gone on a cleanse diet? Raise you guys' hands if you guys gone on cleanse diets before. I've done it. I've done it before. There was one time where I was pretty sick because I was eating some dirty food, so I had to become a vegan for a little bit, sadly. <laughs> but you know, I'm health, I was healthy. I became healthy. But you know, yeah. The whole purpose of that cleanse diet is to get rid of that junk that's inside of you, to clean you out, to clean the insides of you for you can have a better health. And that's just how it is with our walk with God. God wants to get inside of you and get rid of the, all, all that junk that's inside of you and make you pure again. He wants to cleanse us. And in order for him to actually cleanse us, we need to get rid of that junk in our lives. So this kind of brings me back to the story about Samson. Make sure you guys heard me right though. I said Samson, not Samsung. I don't want nobody to approach me later on saying iPhone is better. I know it is better. I do have an iPhone. So let's clarify one more. Samson, not Samsung. So let's continue. So Samson had a problem with girls. Sounds like how I used to be, I'll be honest. But anyways, he had junk in his heart because he married a lady named Delilah out of his own flesh. 
and not by the Spirit. He messed up. He, he was messing around with sin this whole time. He played with it. He kept on teasing it and eventually caught up to him. He told, uh, he told his wife how he actually had his strength. And that was by his hair. Of course, we all know the story. There was a promise that uh, that was made unto God that gave him actually those powers and he broke that because he was toying uh, with sin. Anyways, he ended up being captured and was humiliated and tortured in front of the whole city. In Judges uh, 16, 28, these are his last words to God. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once. O oh God, that I may be avenged on the Philistine, Philistines for my two eyes. That's powerful right there because eventually he was avenged, all right? God gave him the power to knock down those pillars, but it all started because Samson realized that he had this junk inside of his heart and he needed to cry out to God in order for uh, him to get that strength back. Maybe you have junk in your heart. Cry out to God so you can defeat the mess that's inside of you. We can't win these spiritual battles, but God can. In John 16, 33, it says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In, in this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. James chapter four, verse seven, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I'm not saying these scriptures because, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm saying these scriptures because as long as you have that junk in your heart, you will not overcome this world. In fact, you will actually become a slave to this world. You would become a slave to this world. Resist it and it will flee from you. And I'm not saying that resisting it once is going to make it flee from you. I'm not saying that, yeah, resisting it once is gonna make you free automatically. The devil's gonna always try to attack you, but eventually he will get tired because if you submit to God and get rid of that junk, he will leave, you, leave because God is our king and he's already overcome this world. So before we actually get into step three, in our final step of renovating our lives. Let's re recap the first two. So the first one was to rethink our space. Maybe you have a part in your life that you need to rethink about. Like we've seen about Jonah whenever, uh, when he was at the bottom of the boat. He could have stayed at the bottom and gave up, but he knew that God sent a storm his way to bring him back, bring him back on track, make him rethink of his situation that he was in, make him reevaluate re his life. And he needed to reevaluate his life to finally submit to God. He had to rethink that space and he ended up going back to Nineveh. The second one was to get rid of that junk. And we talked about how Samson, on how he played with sin and uh, where it got him. He was captured and was took as a slave and ended up crying out to God to give him the power to avenge himself. So you see, Samson had to kill that pride because he knew he actually messed up. He knew he was playing with sin and he continued. So he had to kill that pride and he had to submit himself to God to get rid of that junk that was in his heart. And it, it all ended up with him having to cry out to God. So once you rethink your space, you must remove all the junk in your life. And our final step, you must fill that space with something new. So we're on a final step of renovation in our lives. And that final step, like I said, is filling it with something new. What's the purpose of renovation if you don't fill it with something new? What's the whole purpose? There's no purpose. As you see, we filled our space completely. All of our mu uh, music stuff was on the other side. We filled this place up completely. All the chairs, we added more chairs in. We're adding more to this church. We're not just leaving these spaces empty. We're, we're occupying it. But we need to be careful what we're actually filling that space with. Some people may think of getting, uh, getting rid of the junk means getting rid of their loved ones before they can find a new one. That, that is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is filling that empty space now with God. When I gave my life to Christ, 
and got rid of that junk, I, f I, filled, I filled it with God. I still stayed half in and half out, I'll be honest, because I still had space I needed to rethink in my life and, cl and clear up for God. I struggled with my walk for the first, first few months, because, uh, but once I, I fully, fully surrendered, I filled my life. I filled my, myself so much with God that there was no space for nothing else. It's important to fill your space with God and not worldly things. The Bible literally gives us the, an, an answer, the, uh, give us the answer of what to fill ourselves with whenever, you re, re, uh, whenever uh, we repent. And in Galatians 5, 22 uh, through 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. So you know, a lot of us, including myself, try to fill uh, our lives with so many, so many different things. But before I met Jesus, I would try to fill, it, uh, fill that void in my life with girls, with work, and other stuff that was ungodly. I would go through all these steps of the whole renovation, but miss the final one. I'll miss the final one, filling that space. And this kind of reminded me about the illustration that my dad kind of gives uh, about playing the ba baseball. You circle, you circle around first, you, you tag second, you tag third, third, but you and you make it home. But you're still out because you circled around first. You still miss the step into making heaven your home. And Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in, uh, in hope. In this scripture, the most important part that we actually need to focus on is believing. You will not be able to have hope or joy if you don't believe. And the way you, uh, the way you believe is filling that space with God that's in your life. You know, I know that we, we kind of went over earlier about David, but David's a perfect example of this is because here's David. He was a man after God's own heart. He was a man after God's own heart. He de defeated Goliath. He became a king. We all know that, uh, but I, what I really want to focus on is David sinning. He, he got one of his troops killed. He got his troops wife pregnant and he tried to play it off. David knew what he did wrong, uh, what he did was wrong, but I wanna focus on the repentance part. And I want you to challenge, I wanna challenge you to read Psalms 51 on your own timing, but right now we're gonna go over verse 10 through 12. And like I said, I read this part a little bit earlier. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your willing spirit. This is really very, very important because David had to rethink that space in his life. He had to get rid of that junk in his life. He had to fill that space with God. And you know, I call, I call this message renovation, but in all honesty, what this message is actually about is repentance. Here's three examples of people who needed to rethink their space, get rid of that junk in their life, and fill that space with God. Here's three perfect people. Jonah was a prophet of God. Samson was a warrior of God. David was a man after God's heart, and he was also a king. What's my uh, what's my point? Doesn't uh, what's my point here? My point is it doesn't matter who, what what your title is, whoever you are. Repentance is needed. No one is perfect. We just saw da that David uh, that from we we just saw that from David, a man after God's own heart, probably one of the closest persons to God that wanted God more than anybody, sinning and having to repent doesn't matter who you are and it's very important for us to have renovation in our lives like i said first rethink of your space in your life rethink that space in your life what are you dealing with what's holding you back second get rid of that junk 
How do you how do you how do you uh, how do you do that? Repent to God, ask for Him for, uh, for forgiveness, and third, fill that space with something new. And filling that space is with the Holy Spirit. Three easy steps to renovate our lives. It's not no like like you don't have to go on no scavenger hunt or anything like that. It's just right in front of us. Three easy steps. So uh, before I want to close, I do want to offer first altar call of salvation. You know what I mean? If everybody can please uh, close their eyes and bow their heads, please. You know, we can come, like I, I just gave three perfect examples, three people from the Bible who have sinned against God and had to ask for repentance, ask them, ask to get this junk out of their lives. Maybe that's some of us here today. Maybe uh, we, we never feel like we're good enough, so that's why we don't want to ask God for repentance. But you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what role that you're in, we, we need to ask for repentance every single day. Is because we do live in a world that is just super sinful and we can easily get caught up. So if that's you guys, maybe you guys uh, never said the prayer or maybe you guys have said the prayer once, but you, you maybe you, you fell away. If that's you that you need to ask for repentance, please raise your hand. And for those who are online, if that's you too, let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. But if that's you, though, in this room, every, every, every eyes closed, every head bowed, raise your hand if that's you. All right, if everybody can just please stand up together as we come into unity. Let's just pray to God. And you know, I mean, I can't say a prayer to save you, but you need to say this prayer to God. Make this personal. Make this a relationship with God. Talk to him on your own. You got to ask for forgiveness for yourself. I can't ask for forgiveness for you. I can't, I can't lead you to heaven. You have to, you have, to have that one-on-one -on -one with God. So let's just, close in, uh, let's just close in prayer. So Father God, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to come to you and your house, Lord. And I just thank you for the opportunity just to speak your word, Lord. But right now, I just want to pray right now for these three steps over my life, Father God, for me to rethink that space in my life, Lord. Is there something that's inside of me, Lord, that, that shouldn't belong there, Lord? And I pray that you may help me examine myself, Lord, in these situations, Lord, so that, so that whenever something I do notice that doesn't belong there, Lord, that I may get rid of that junk inside of me, Lord, that I may get rid of it and give it to you, Father God. Lord, I just pray right now, whenever I do get uh, get rid of it, Lord, I pray that I may not fill these voids, Lord, that's in my life with something else that's, that shouldn't belong there, Lord, but I may fill it with your spirit, Father God. I pray that your spirit may come inside of me, Father God, that you may, uh, you, uh, that may overflow me, Lord, uh, overflood me, Father God. I pray that I may drown in your spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you. Amen. But all right, you guys, we really thank you guys for joining us on this Sunday morning. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's message. For those who are watching online, please like and share this message. And uh, let us know if you guys do want a shirt. I mean, I think they're really nice. They're really comfortable as well. So you guys have a good one. We'll see you on Wednesday when me and Chris are going to finish off Acts chapter 19. All right, we'll see you.